Feet. Yes. Force off, but... Uh, I like that. Sven caught a LA. It's a solid try lane. And Sven destroyed And also Mike. that uh, they can put Bristol and call it off lane and a plus one safe lane. So would that be a miracle Sven, you think? It could be. He's been kind of playing like the one. Yeah, for sure. So we've been talking a little bit about Team Liquid's lineup. What are the huge pieces that are currently missing from IG? Gee. I mean, I, I guess uh, obviously, Alchemist generally is, speaking, supports <laughs> flexibility. <laughs> yeah. I think when you pick Alchemist, it's, he's so rarely put in that support position anymore that you're kind of pigeonholed into protecting him and getting the Radiance online. I don't really think they can, like, veer too much from their... That's a great point. I mean, we've been seeing teams do things where they'll pick an Earthshaker early, and it's unclear, is this going mid? Is this going to be roaming? Is which going to be, you know, traditional offlane? But here, the Alchemist kind of puts the hand face up. I mean, are, is there any other way to play him other than just hard farming? Not that we've seen recently. You could do something crazy and irresponsible and make him play support. But I'm sure Baboka would be up to the task. Team Liquid's time I would love to pick. Ricky. Oh, Ricky. Okay, okay. Baboka, Ricky. I was thinking about Enchantress for IG. How do you feel about that, Ake? It would be super good. They yeah. have uh, Keeper of the Light and AA, which is like two of the worst heroes against Ench, so... Yeah, you have a lot of experience with that hero. Yeah. I kind of identified that trend Ten last year in TI6. <laughs> oh, really? I, I started playing, well, I started playing Ench and Chen a little bit because I saw, Five I think it was Navi, remaining. who was doing really well right before they the guy. And they're crushing it with art style playing Chen and Ench, and it's because these two supports have no way to deal with the creep that yeah. Ench or Chen brings to the lane. That's a like really tr trigger point when you want to pick Ench. Exactly. You, you, take, you can take Ench can go to any lane at this point with a creep, and Liquid can't really do anything about it except get out of his way. Yeah. So that's a free lane one for In IG if they decide to go that route. They did get the Rikido, though, which is I guess uh, Bobo Casio who's gonna. Play the Ench otherwise, I guess. He's still two, the four. Q, I mean, Ench yeah, could be a five. Yeah, true. It's going to win you a lane. It, you know, it's similar to like Lich, which is not banned or picked. It's just that you end up with both Wiki and Ench, which maybe isn't the best support common remaining. because both of them really want to roam, so you don't really have a lane support. Maybe Lich? I feel like maybe five Lich would be nice for the light and give him some ice armor in the early game sure. to help deal with the Bristleback quills and also give, make his lane a little bit easier because I imagine he's going to be pretty pressured with Bristleback and Caudal on his face in the early game. It's very good against both Bristol and Ursa, especially since they're physical damage, so the leak Shaman is going to be very good against them. So I feel like Alchemist is still going to be a large centerpiece for Invictus, and obviously yeah. you've mentioned that Ursa can wreck Team Alchemist Liquid's early in lane. Do you think this will sort of pigeonhole Ricky or Lich? We're killing it, man. Look at nice. us go. This is game two. Do you think that like Ricky and Lich will almost be a little forced to address the Ursa Alchemist problem? Or do you think that this is exactly what Invictus wants? They're happy to dedicate a hero in order to help the Alchemist Ursa matchup. Ten seconds That's Lich does. Yeah. yeah, Lich is definitely going to have to help out the Alchemist. Yeah. They're yeah. very happy with that as well. Five I mean, when you pick Alchemist first too, you know that the, the, the like other heroes like really needs to fit well with him because he is, as, as you said, the center of the, the draft. I'm a bit worried about these, the Lycan and the Alk. I think they're both going to have a hard time in lane. And Maybe Ricky and Lich can help them, but I don't know how much help Ricky's has any of these heroes. Maybe Ricky... Yes, support wise, Ricky is good against Keeper of the Light and AA. They don't really want to fight Ricky as well, but I think they're going to stay close to their cores, so Ricky won't really find them in the, in the jungle. So we've talked a little bit about some of these specific lane matchups and the concerns. What about just big game-wide strategy? Again, Invictus is going to be very centered around during this game giving Alchemist the chance to get as much farm as he can before engaging in massive bad. team fights and pushing down. What, what, how would you evaluate the existing, just broad team goals of Team Liquid? I'm not sure where Team Liquid's going, to be honest. They I, want to uh, pressure them at the least. They want yeah. to have the, like, Crystal Buck in the front with Polo and pressure towers early on, and Nurse as well, maybe getting a early Blink Dagger to me. make sure that they can kill out. I mean, do you think it's safe to say that Five perhaps this is a lot remaining. focused about specific early hero matchups and trying to gain an edge there. I, I think like what they want to do is take, get Bristle really nice and fat, take that on T1s, do Roach with Ursa, and then just have Bristle back sitting in the front and have you these two like and Alchemist yeah. very, very poor, and then they won't have enough damage. Their lineup on Invictus gaming side cannot do any damage. Like, especially if they last pick a Sven, God forbid, anyone with Warcry, they're done for. I'm worried that Liquid's going to be split push this game by Alchemist, Manta, Radiance, and Lycan summons, and Ricky, and Scout Ricky. Ricky putting deep wards in, finding out where Five hopefully I, or Liquid's Team initiator Liquid's is. I don't think these heroes hit. really need somebody to lock somebody down in order for them to connect on their damage. Ah, Sand King. Again, we're, we're seeing some hints of 
similar wishes to have good pickoffs. And actually, I mean, Sand King seems to fill a lot of nice gaps. Again, the super reliable stun for Sand King. Sand King's nice, gives him a bit more speed fight. Hopefully, Ricky will be able to find his targets for him so he can Five connect with his remaining. stun. It's also quite okay against Ursa on the lane if he actually can get some uh, levels, but probably Ursa's gonna have A with him. Yeah, Sand King. Probably not the best laner in this game. I think that's going to be the biggest struggle for IG, but Lich should hopefully help at least one of the lanes, perhaps two. So I feel like the big story for IG is that they obviously primarily want Alchemist to get lots of farm this game, and secondarily want to make sure that Lycan doesn't get dumpstered in his early game laning. So it's exactly. really going to be a lot about how these supports get allocated in order to protect those two big goals in the early game. For Team Liquid, their last pick's coming in now. Monkey King. There's the Monkey King, man. There it is. Armor is Monkey King. King. Okay, all right. I have no idea what Team Liquid's primary path to victory is. Okay, you have any thoughts? Well, they're going to pressure the lanes. They're going to go Roche with Ursa. And they're going to like just hope that they can find the Alchemist and kill him. But it's going to be hard since they have Ricky and Lycan to scout. So. It's almost as though their primary goal is just to not let IG achieve theirs. Well, I'm very excited to see if Team Liquid can pull it together in this game. They lost game one in a convincing fashion, and IG is looking amazing. Let's throw it to the casters for game two. Lumi, if there's any team that should know what a Monkey King can offer and how to deal with them, you'd think it would be IG with Boboka. And I have to say, while sadly we won't be seeing QO on the main stage here, he did perhaps leave a legacy with his mid Monkey King which we got to cast in the group stage. Yeah, the mid Monkey King, or Monkey King in general as a core, has been talked a lot, you know, behind the scenes, backstage, rumors, and... Whispering. It's, whispering, yeah. It's, it's here to show up. As we get into the game, I'll talk about how it matches up against Alchemist, and I'll tell you, it's a pretty good matchup for the Monkey King. Yeah, get excited, guys. We've got a mid Monkey King in none other than Miracle's Hands Liquid on the ropes. Now they've got to take two games to avoid getting dropped early to the lower bracket. If there's one team that could do it, though. Number one team in the group stage. Yeah, absolutely. In the tougher group, some would say. Now that said, you know, Liquid, they do have one big in their belt coming into this team. At least yeah. they're working some of the big names they also did well at, but... Historically, this team is always in the running and a tough takedown, but rarely do they make they it all the They were always number two, second place in some of the recent majors. I mean, even if you go back all the way, talk about history, Kuro, second place at TI, you know, like just going way, way back. So I feel like Team Liquid has put in time. They really just want to come in with a big win. And on the other side, you know, you've got Burning. I don't know that there's a player who's been Yo, at this the guy, top level longer he is than this guy. Destined to win a TI. So many legends, like you look at like Fear, for example, finally yeah. stepped back for being a player this year. There's few players that have played as long as Burning, and fewer still who have not won a TI out of that list. You know, I like how we talk about these big names, but some of these players that hasn't been to TI, this is their first TI. GH, a superstar for Team Liquid. And of course, the uh, the three playmakers of IG, think about OP, XSS, as well as Bobuka. This is their first TI as well. And, and arguably, they are the most important players most reliant on the team. Players, yeah, they, both teams rely on these players so much. So it just shows you that experience is one thing, making these deep tournament runs, but all of these new organization and teams need new blood to kind of make things still function. Oh, so many storylines at play here as we get ready. The teams entering the lanes and the battle about to begin. Liquid going to set up with the offensive dual lane. And I think the good news is for Liquid, they do have a GH comfort pick. As we see Baboka early trying to get that rune steal. But instead of Liquid, slight little advantage for them. They'll have the triple bounty rune grab. So thoughts on the laning setup, Luby? We're going to see Matumba Man going mid as the Ursa, someone who can. Uh, so it won't actually be the Miracle mid uh, Muggykin that we thought. He's yep. going to head safe lane. Uh, and this is something it feels like could put a lot of pressure early on this Alchemist. In fact, when Miracle played the other Monkey King game in the group stage, I do believe that was a safe lane as well. They're going to give the matchup of Ursa, uh, something that Ben Wu touched up on the panel, is one of the most amazing matchups. Look at OP's position right now. Hasn't even seen a creep. Just watching as Ursa denies. Yeah, Ursa with chilling touch. You don't want to be trading at this yep. stage. So. Also, one quick thing I want to mention. Look at... Lycan's item choice here. Normally, as a safe lane carry, you, you, you know, start things out with a stout shield or the makings of a poor man shield. You get up a lot of stats, a lot of regen. He's got boots first, 
he knows he is going to be sacrificed in this position. They're sending the Lich bottom. In their mind, it's more important for IG to win Sand King's lane than to win Lycan. So right from the get-go, you have two cores of IG that did the heavy lifting of last game, being completely sacked from the lane stage. This XSS Sand King better come up huge. And Liquid are already trying to really take advantage of this pressure opportunity as GH is dragging the creeps at the top lane, allowing Mind Control to get aggressive on burning, but the early boots are certainly helping limit the damage. Still creeps already hitting the tower, getting that early attrition in. So IG, as you mentioned, it's really all invested in the Sand King here. He has yeah. to have a good start. He has to get a fast blink or at least some items that allow him to rotate, and he needs to go and salvage the other lanes. Because as the lanes stand right now, OP actually doing all right in the farm department, but always there's a threat that he just goes down uh, and gives up kills to this Ursa, especially if Kuroki is in the neighborhood. And the big difference between this game and the last game is that I don't think IG is going to be able to give as many stacks to the uh, Alchemist. Ricky is just not a good stacking hero because he just goes in this and the creeps lose his vision and then the creeps just go back. And then Lich, he's going to be sitting in the lane pretty much 100% of the time, so he's also not going to be off uh, the jungle too much to stack. So. I really want to focus on this. Like, what? Oh, oh Boca. I was going to ask him, what can hey. he do? And he gets a haste and he gets a courier kill. Oh, man, this guy. So many plays at DAC to win what was basically, I think most would agree, like the, the third major of the year, just in terms of the stiff competition at that event uh, and how grueling of a format it was. But yeah, what can he do? Like, aside from that courier snipe, Bristleback is not an easy gank early. Obviously, the Ursa mid is not going to be a possible kill without a three, maybe four hero gank. So. Is the Riki just purely here for the vision? Is there anything else that you could expect Boboka to get accomplished? I think on paper during the draft, you look at these heroes like the Ancient Apparition, the Keeper of Light, as we have a Burrow Strike happening on the bottom side. Miracle takes a couple of nukes here, and they might be able to right-click him down. XSS though will get ice up. One more right-click here from Q. They will get the kill. They're gonna and get here more. comes Boboka. You asked what he's going to do? He's going to give you the second kill of the game for IG. They have disaster. Meanwhile, lane. top lane burning get blo gets wow. blown up as Liquid just get off that Illuminate in time. So they answer back, but the early aggression again going IG's way, even in a game where it looks a bit harder to pull off at this stage. Yes. The rotations have just been so good. Let's see, Miracle trying to get that Tree Dance off, but constantly taking damage. Earlier wasn't able to. But Boka sneaks around. There's a Sentry here. Kuro is going to deward him. So they are starting to fixate on this bottom lane with three heroes congregating as perhaps their best location to make those hero kill plays. Yeah, one of the things that Monkey King struggles as, uh, as a hero, is that he doesn't do well when you're running a bunch of heroes at him early on. And I think that's the reason why that IG has sent the Lich to the bottom. Again, they're sacrificing two of their cores just to shut down the Monkey King. There's a lot of value placed in that. But back to your question about what is Boboka ultimately going to be doing. He's quite good against heroes like Ancient Operation of Keeper of Light because they don't really have a way to repel the Ricky when he's you know, chasing after you. But as such, like I don't think Ancient Operation or Keeper of Light has really left the lane too much. It, it's an awkward support duo, right? Yeah. It's, while GH's Keeper of the Light is certainly one of his strongest heroes and you know very frequently ban worthy, uh, at the same time, normally they pair it with Kuro being a more of a playmaker. Like the Tusk probably comes to mind as the big one. Uh, oh, here we go. Bubbleka. They're going to set up mid, trying to look for Matumba Man. Oh, he's looking for the Courier. Or like, maybe hey, the Courier. It's alive right now. Okay, it gets bursted. That means on the way back, it's not going to get bursted. It's he does not have vision, though. So Boboka doesn't realize it's happening. Might try to turn his attention towards top. Go assist burning, but... Again, Bristle not a hero that Riki can offer much against, so really it's the Keep of the Light they're going to want to kill, and they've decided to move Q off the lane as well. Q is going to finally make that journey. You know, the panel mentioned perhaps the Lich can win two lanes. Well, this is going to be the start of trying to salvage one of them at least. He will complete his rotation, but immediately Mind Control gets the go on and forces the TP lane not salvaged. Yep. An obvious synergy between this liquid top lane is that you put the Shocker Magic onto Bristleback and he gets to Machine Gun Curl Spray uh, one to, you know, back to back. And that's actually pretty important in terms of the mid-game teamfights as well as the early game laning harass against Bernie. They're getting out CS really hard, but the, the nice thing for IG is they have Greeble's Greed. So they're actually not behind at all. With that in the Courier Snipe, technically, they're leading. Of course, you'd like to be farther ahead with the Alk, but... 
It is allowing them to stay in this game, and with the Lich denies as well, experience is just fine for IG. So, despite Liquid's strong lanes, they don't have that huge advantage you'd like to see. I mean, I think yes and no. You're right that the go graph shows that the two teams are pretty even, but you gotta keep in mind that IG's timing comes in much, much later. Like, the Alchemist takes a long time to ramp up. Burning also will take a t long time to ramp up. The difference is that Ursa, you get phase on this guy, you get blink on him, and he's just ready to go. And so right now, have those phase. yeah, right now it looks cool right now for, for IG, but give it five minutes, Liquid is going to be all over IG, and I don't think IG can handle that kind of pressure. Provoka continues to roam during this nighttime, looking for openings. Kuro does get a ward down. I think he has an idea where the ward is, actually. Yeah, I believe he did see it in the inventory, and he there will be instantly dewarding it. So, well, the kills have not been raining in. Still doing his part here to lend some assist to the vision game. Early objectives were claimed. Liquid took down the tier one top. Obviously, a big part of their strategy is the Bristle is their main siege engine, and later on it gets tougher once IG start to actually look to defend those towers, throw the Frost Armor on it. GH again just going for these wild dusts, just kind of hoping he finds the Riki, and again, he's not there. Now maybe tries to poke GH a little bit. No teleport scroll on him. Early harass is possible, might even be a kill. Ow, gets activated. To safety. They're gonna blink forward. Heavy damage, now the cloud, but not enough slow. He's gonna need a little more to take GH down, and Matumba is there to lend some support. Still, though, pressure's there that's already two dust charges expended, neither of them effective, and what I like to call the support pack enemy is certainly rearing its head. Matumba man moves in mid, clapping onto OP. This is out the ultimate, and the core rage down. Pretty decent downtime at these early. So it might be an opening when this ends. Yep. Q making the first stack of the game for his team. Just what a difference, you know? Like one ancient stack right now at eight minutes compared to, I don't know, the 45 billion that OP was able to farm last game. There's such a difference in the way that lanes were done as well as the pressure that IG is feeling right now. I'm pretty sure if he farmed 45 billion, there'd be like a lot I mean, of pits opening a up slight in the arena or something. But... Mind control now, TP now, Kaboka. Trying to find that opening, can't quite catch him. And no point in the chain frost yet for you to try and cancel the TP. But for IG, everything really is going to hinge on XXS. He's done a good job at not dying. He is farming really well. He's right farming now. quite well. He is rushing the blink. For Liquid, you'd love to try and maybe make a move on him before he gets it, but he's just playing so defensively, and they really do lack the the reliable kill potential here. You know, Ursa, no blink dagger, no real disable to speak of, so. While they'd maybe like to punish him, doing so is not easy. Yeah, something that was brought up during the drafts is that these two support duo for Team Liquid is just awkward. You don't have a good initiator. They're both kind of playing the same position. You don't have a leading disable. Oh, mind control. Never mind, which looks like he wants to go. Actually coming back in. Does have the chain frost available. OP seems like he wants to fight this, but has no points in unstable concoction. And meanwhile, the top lane burning is able to run down GH, gets the kill. People looking to contest these ancients early. Oh, burning! Look at the item he's queuing up. He's going for a Hannah minus on like it. All right, the gold strat for IG. Hey, man, if you if you need to recover. Also, you do it. I want to point out, Lumi, that these ancients are being stolen by mind control, trying to limit that Alex economy. XXS wants to come in, contest this perhaps. He might have to burrow out to ensure this cold feet doesn't proc. He sandstorms for now, juking away. Meanwhile, Baboka being hounded, but he drops the cloud, he continues to retreat, Miracle there to cut him off, early five-man Dota from Liquid, nets them a Ricky kill, probably lets them take down these Ancients as well, but look at this out, he's not actually going armlet, he's trying to go straight into the Relic, I don't know if Liquid is expecting this, let's see, can they punish, they do deny the Ancients, they can slow him down a little bit, but it's still going to be a very fast Radiance for him. One of the strengths of the Radiance is the ability to toggle and just gain like a lot more HP during a team fight, but you have Ancient VR. Apparition, so it's you can't toggle, you can't gain HP. So I, I think this is actually the pretty standard response to what you have, what you're up against. Yeah, but like no durability items at all. You know, exactly. See like a Vanguard, or maybe at least a casual cloak is top lane. G H being hounded a bit by Baboka. His durability item this game is to not get hit by the ice. That's all really you can count on. And, you know, compared to last game, there was a flaming lasso into Ice Blast, so it was pretty much guaranteed every single fight. This time around, 
again, there is no delete disable. So if the positioning of the Alchemist is good enough, if he's fast enough, he might be able to just run away from the Xbox. We talked a lot about him at the very start of the game. We haven't really said much since then. What are you expecting out of Miracle on the Monkey King? So far, he's been quite content just to farm in this bottom lane. Hasn't really made any rotations, has not been able to shut down the Sand King. Like, what is the game plan with him moving forward? Get Blink and get on top of heroes and kill them. Very simple plan, but as a Ursa... Oh, no, I'm sorry for Miracle, not for Mithumbum. Oh, sorry for Miracle, yes. Um, he is going to be the secondary damage killer. Epicenter, here we go. Straight on to Miracle. Cloud's going to follow this up. A quick kill for IG, the Blink debut, a resounding success. Here comes the push. Yeah, you just don't expect Sankey to pick up a Blink so early. And right now, Curl's hanging around. Chain Frost to say what's up, and Curl will just... And the reason why he's so high level, he's, a, he's been maxing Sacrifice. This is the build that you don't see too often outside of Pumpkin. Carry Lynch. Yeah. Well, not Carry Lynch, but <laughs> most of the time you just want to pick up a, a level of uh, Ice Armor or even two just to make sure that whoever you're laning against have a good time. But the greedy, greedy Lynch is one of the highest uh, levels in the game. So while that was happening, OP continues to farm. Radiant's basically done. Just needs about 300 more gold here for the recipe. The Blink is online for the Sand Cane. Burning's looking to catch up with this Midas. He has not died since that early moment. Getting very close to the recipe. With that, Hygiene's gonna kick into high gear as far as net worth goes, unless Liquid makes some moves, Lumi. The Blink on Matumpa Man you wanted to see. It's now about to be picked up, but flying control, getting caught out here. The Burrow to start. Can he TP out quickly? The Cloud comes through, he tries to run. Stacking up the Quills, he's gonna man fight his way out of this. My control takes down one. And that's it. Oh, Bristle, Bristle feeling very mortal in this TI. Yeah, running for him again. Shapeshift about to end. Burning recognizes that as well. We'll just turn back. Hanamitis, though, is online. And now wants to retreat away attack. successfully. Matumba Man does have his Blink Dagger. TP pulling down. And he makes this committed jump forward. He can go with the Frost Armor. It's not the easiest kill. Burning into the trees and GH in pursuit. They maul the wolf. The bear wins the duel. Oh, and the bottom lane. Miracle caught out by a burrow. IG with the response. Radiance online. I think that's a great trade. Let the farm for, begin. Yeah, for IG. I mean, they, they traded a Lycan for... That just got a kill for the safe lane Monkey King. Here's the thing, there is a Midas on the Lycan, so he get, is, he gets to catch up, whereas I think uh, the Monkey King is struggling right now. Too. He's working towards the Echo Saber. You were asking what his role is going to be for this game. He's going to be up in the front line, helping to see, helping to dish out some AoE damage, but as the game moves on, I think that role he will struggle to, to find and be able to fulfill, because this game will move into a phase where Alchemist will send illusions Dyer's everywhere. And I don't think Team Liquid has the heroes to deal with that kind of gameplay. Another mechanic to keep in mind is like this Radiance Rush. Uh, in addition to AA making the armlet less useful, the early miss chance is huge against Liquid. They have like okay magic damage from the supports, even quite good. But finishing heroes, you really want the Ursa to be right clicking. Same for the Bristle. The Monkey King as well, super reliant on it. And we will see Matumba Man getting aggressive. The Radiant Courier sniped again. Boboka smoking Liquid with his early movements. But Liquid is just going to stay committed here. They start to work on this tower, but they're pushing into Frost Armor while the Lycan is rapidly split pushing in the bottom lane. They're earning happy to avoid these engagements. This is characteristic for Liquid to be so all in on this five man aggression. Normally you've got. Like that miracle kind of insurance plan farming away. Radiant oh no, this has been Liquid's playstyle. I kind of mentioned it last yeah, game when Mind I'll Control plays Bristleback. He loves to go for the mechanism. Yeah, He's starting that right now. He didn't go for it last game because he was up against the AA. Look for Team Liquid to buy man up and go for engagements here. Oh, Ice Blast. this kill. Oh, kind of oh, success. Does get clipped, but now the Chain Frost ushering Liquid away. Oh, he's on the chase, but Tumba Man potentially in danger here. Boboka trying to drop down that cloud and burning, revving up, shape shift, and off to the races. Oh, the Wolf hunting him, mind control on the retreat. Can they isolate this Bristleback, bring him down? Good staggered retreat here, but at the same time, still the pursuit continues. Mind control getting control, but not being finished off rapidly. If Miracle gets in position, pouncing down, sprints in from behind. This chaotic fight favoring Liquid, it seems, on the second round of engagement. A one for one thus far. Committing onto my oh control, but the G8 save! Huge plays, Gandalf to the rescue! And now Miracle's bringing up into the trees again in a way to save. 
Can they cage him? Yes, they, they can. Hurt. The Burrow's there. The Epi to follow. Wait. He brings out the XXX with the protection blink. Unbelievable. I think I just tuned into an episode of Naruto. I just see Ninja jumping everywhere, following each other. And great play by XSS. Getting that last laugh from the Blink Dagger. Good stuff. He's working towards a force stab. But like you said, I think there is a sense of desperation coming out from Team Liquid. They are trying to group up and push. And, and trading doesn't work, Luffy. No, you're up against the Midas. You're up against an Alchemist with a Radiance. You're up against the Lich constantly sacrificing creeps. You are in an even trade. You are losing this game. Liquid First. need more. Ursa, he is trying his best to hunt for these hero kills, but I think IG are doing an excellent job just staying spread out, or when they are together, they're making sure that supports are well hidden within vision in the trees. Um, they do find Boboka. Can they wrangle him, though? Can he's the, so fast with the The patience. commitment from Liquid with the sentries, the dust, like, even if they kill him, he's already really done his job, and then you throw the courier snipes in. Mind control now. Pursued a bit here. IG, as you mentioned, spreading the map. Really pressuring these supports and yep, preventing Liquid from going for that group up play, even if they might want to. Is there a plan B for Liquid? Like, do they are they all in on this kind of early fighting, this early aggression? Can they try to slow the game down? And oh, but we just steals the creep. Okay, cheeky little bugger. Uh, Robo cut. All right, still alive. Another dust? <laughs> He's forced out. All right, How for many those, now? For those that's new to Dota 2, that play, that was not really worth um, getting the, the centaur for, for his life. But yeah, he get, he's not getting into their mind, though, that yeah. is... Uh, the the, the yeah. psychological warfare, I think in the context of what they're doing, like, those deaths are going to happen. He is there to space create, he's there to drop wards. As I think that's the team is farming. That's really him out on top. just like filling himself a little bit, perhaps a little bit too much. But, you know, like... Can't, can't fall. Two courier snipes, he's had a hell of a start as XXS continues to make plays, finding GH and cutting him right off of his mount. Now, Liquid start to group up. They want this tier one bottom. But they're not really all that quick on sieging. Ursa not really the best building hitter. You don't get the benefit of the fury swipes there. They don't have any minus armor for structures. They're fighting into the frost armor, so like when they try to convert kills into objectives, it's slow going. I think the big thing for me is where is Miracle's farm? He's been working on this Echo Saber for you know a, a long time now. Even when it comes online, it's it how much will it do? There's, yeah. there's frost armor. There's an Alk who's well on his way to a Manta. I feel like if there is one major item that he would like to pick up is probably the Desolator. Really helps out during his uh, Wukong command, and of course, like you've been mentioning, the Frost Armor, they need some answer to that. That was what we saw out of QO, and granted QO had an IO constantly just pocketing him in the mid lane, but they had that really early Deso timing where all of a sudden he dropped Wukong's command, and they, like, three heroes basically just died almost instantly. To exactly. Crash. Well, the difference is like, that QO had farmed that game. Right, right now, Miracle is, like, first in the line to the bank. Like, we just have yeah, nothing. This is big. Liquid do claim an Aegis, crucial for them. They grab that objective, and now they want to chase for more. Miracle leading the charge, springing in to action, but already IG sensing something's not right, and they're away, and you can see Baboko just mirroring their movements across the map now, planting down those aggressive wards, maybe looking for another courier kill, constant guerrilla warfare here. He might even find a third, Lumi. Oh, Ice Frog smile on oh. him. He's barely down, and looks like he won't find the opening. Burning, getting caught out now. He knows Batumba Man's he is out onto him, but oh, oh, oh. Chip. Oh, Matu wants to commit. Burning. There's just not a whole lot of way. Wait, going back in? It looks like they All want right. to commit here, but meanwhile, Kamala and GH could get caught out. Batumba Man getting that Q kill, but they're going to lose the Keeper again, so IG do retaliate. Liquid now chewing through the Frost Armor here, trying to work on that tower. Objectives are essential, but the split push is there. The Alkalusion, granted, not very quickly trying to Take down this tier two in the bottom lane. We do seem to gain the edge here when it comes to that oh so important map control. As they knock the tower fallen. down. Radiant's bottom tower is under. So attack. you were asking what is plan B for Team Liquid, right? Like, you know, right now the group up plan A is sort of working, but not to the degree that they would like it to. You were asking whether they could scale. I think trying to scale an, against an Alchemist lineup is always very dangerous. Lycan's got that Midas as his first major item, so he's building up for a long time. Yes, they can scale, but I, I just don't 
don't think it's a very good game plan. I think Liquid still definitely wants to just slow down towers after towers, get the next Roshan. That's the one thing that their lineup is super good at. You got the Nasal Goo, you got Ursa, obviously, to just go into the pit. So I, I think Liquid needs to bring out the bring down the other towers, get the next Roche, and look to finish the game in the next 10 to 15 minutes. A crucial part of that game plan will be this Aghanim Scepter that GH is trying to complete to yes. sustain the team during pushes, but problem is, He's constantly being forced to buy all this extra detection. No, Curl, tricky. Curl's been buying that. Like, Curl's being very, very self-sacrificial. I think the bigger problem is that Sanky is hunting him. He's just died twice. Well, and the Ricky. Ricky's yeah, yeah, jumping and all Ricky over. Too. And, and guess where XSS is? Right is next to GH, top. about to hunt him down again. He understands that this is a big that part of the push. bottom. You maybe wants to go here. The MV comes through. Connection on Miracle. Can they finish him? He manages yeah, to jump away. One, more. one hit from Dead. Four He's seven. not out of there. Just shoves Here's himself it. in and gives him the old Scorpion Claw. Now Papoka hunting for that follow-up. He moves on to GH. Again, just continuing to shut down his farm. Force him on his heels. He does have the TP. Need be, but the bait is there in the tricks of the trade. Still may go down the side. Flat setting up the timing right from Kuro. The trap has been sprung. GH staying alive to help from an old friend. And I think that's a... Again, like you mentioned, even though he died there, it's absolutely fine. We're gonna watch this uh, team fight one more time. XSS identifies that Monkey King's target that he wants, quickly goes on it. The Force Staff almost saves him, but XSS, again, the ninja coming in. They're down a lot, Lumi. 10,000 gold. Granted, it is an out lineup and there's a Midas, so you don't really feel the effects in terms of combat, but it's getting far enough ahead that IG have basically made up for that greed early, and now are really starting to dish off the damage. Liquid still holding the Aegis for a wee bit longer. They'd love to find a couple of follow-up kills, maybe make a play, but in the bottom lane, it's IG who gets the jump. They burrow in, commit to this crystal. Can he stay alive? Tries to retreat with the solar attempt to mech. It's not enough. IG throw the kitchen sink. And it's, comes Ursa. it will clip him for now. The Frost Armor keeping you alive. Nice follow-up there. XXS with the save. The offlane Sand King buying time, creating space. Liquid cannot reply. I think if Ursa was there earlier with the Ice Blast, he was uh, going to be able to get pick up like two to three kills. Unfortunately, just lacked the vision to prepare for any kind of IG gang. Speaking of vision, Bobulga has picked up a gem as well, so he's going to be able to walk around the map and give even more trouble to the I, uh, Liquid supports. It's starting to feel like that's something Liquid are going to want. Like oh, like like well. They can kill Ricky. That's a big kill his. from Matumba Man. Yep. Again, the bear proves his supremacy. I mean, here's the thing, though. You were asking, what is this Ursa going to do in the mid game? And I said, he needs to jump in and get hero kills. How many times have we actually seen that? Like, that's maybe his second, third solo kill. And I just don't think that's enough to carry Team Liquid out of the, the hole that they're in. I feel like the Sand King has perhaps done that job better than he has so far. They have 13 kills, and he has been in 11 of them. So, well, hold that thought here as the Tumba Man jumps in again, looks for Q. We'll find another solo kill. All right. But he gets Yule Scepter up. Oh, not nice. even if he dies. Matu in trouble. Does manage to get off the Enrage. No more ages for him. He's gone in deep for this. Ice Blast coming in, but nothing to combo with it. The timing was not right for Matumba Man. Forcing it too far and lost to death. I think this is a good time to actually toggle between the Radiant and Dire Vision. And just look at the big disparity between the two teams. Radiant, only one war up on the map, much thanks to Bobuka's gem. Dire, wards everywhere deep into the enemy jungle. And this is not counting in the fact that, hey, there's a Ricky running around. But I think the answer has finally come here. It's in the form of the Keeper of Light, Aghanim Scepter. During daytime, he will have flying vision around him. And if he could pick up a gem. Mind control on his own bottom. Does have that AA behind him, but no real save. It comes out to start the fight, gets the stun up. They're gonna right follow here, this up. Burning racing forward. They do have the chain frost to cancel TP. Curl locks in the ice blast, but do they really want to fight? More are coming as Liquid Stream and Baboka scouts out the rotation. He can't die, he has the gem. Oh, no, he dropped the jump. Just kidding. He's fine. And so crucial, again, the Ricky is allowing them to choose their fights wisely. Yes. Otherwise, Liquid likely get into position with four or five and might just overrun IG. But they do take the tower down. Give him three. Baboka continues to add to the coffers of IG. Liquid. 
Alarmed are gonna force the issue, but with the Frost Armor and all their tower damage just being these melee hitters, it is fairly slow going. They'll take the tier two down. I think this is a group of push. They have men, they have daytime with the Agatha Scepter. They're gonna just look to try to win it or get some big, big damage coming in. They do not have a type though. They have one hood, so at the center could be huge. Yeah, well, if they can land it, that's the question. The Cuffman down to about half HP. They're gonna go right on Matumba Man. The heal coming in from Keep Your Life is up. Chain Frog bouncing around. Ultimate committed by Matumba Man. Can he make the retreat? It looks like he'll be fine for now, but already very low HP. Again, Keeper could juice him right back up. And I don't think Liquid is going anywhere. That's Chain Frost now. Chain Frost down. What more will follow? Lycan not split pushing. Meanwhile, Burning's trying to get out of the jungle and into the top lane, but it's gonna take him a while to get there. While for Liquid, this journey is rapidly taking form. Mind control flacking away, just poking, prodding, staying out in front. Matumba Man lurking on the side, wants to find the opening here. Did just have vision for a moment of XXS. Not actually hidden. Liquid, no, he's in the neighborhood. He's gonna try for the epicenter, but Matumba Man's there to interrupt this initiation. Great presence of mind from him. The Burrow coming through, connecting on Tuba. Look at the heal. GA is the engine that keeps the push going. Now they deploy the Monkey King Wukong's command. Still, though, IG get the AA kill. They stay alive, but Boca's in through the rear. He blinks out. He will get decapitated. Liquid, like an objective. They want to engage the Alchemist, though. Back. Like it with the flash. Looking for more, but XXX with the rescue play. The triple burrow. Liquid still committing. They will bring him down. This push just won't stop. Finally, Burning gets a follow-up kill. It was one buyback already for Liquid. They need this tower. They might need more. IG know it's important. They won't get enough freely. They don't want to lose their shrines. They're going to get the follow-up kill. That's a dieback on the Ancient Apparition. Huge commitment from him to try and take this tower down. And now the chase is on. They can round them in the rear. By control. Oh. He gets up the quill. Matu with the assist. Can they bring the bristle down? He's also tanky, and Boboko continues pursuit, but it's slow. They need damage. They need control. He keeps on running. The wolves come in. They get him from the front, and IG, IG needs will to slay him. Go into the Roche right now. They cannot give away Aegis on top of Team Liquid. Did you see how brutal that push was? Sure, it was a slow push thanks to the things like Frost Armor as well as Acid Spray, but like you saw, the, the Illuminate just kept killing them up, and there was no answer for IG. It wasn't until the Lycan throw came back and just backstab on the back line. They need to kill Keeper of Light before the fight actually happens, or else there's no way that IG, despite their net worth lead, could actually beat Team Liquid right now. I what? think it's important to take away the Aegis. Another thing that Liquid had in that fight is vision. They did not have vision advantage in the first game. This yep. time it's different. With the Keeper of the Light, you have the flying vision during daytime. They also have the Ice Vortexes, so... IG have not been able, at least in that scenario, to get the clear jump. Like last game, they always had Vision Supremacy with Lycan, Batrider, and Nightstalker. Yes. This game, not the case. And we saw what Monkey King was able to do in that last team fight. Sure, he's very, very underformed, but his big contribution in that team fight was just drop his Wukong command. Once the command's out, there's two things that happen. First, your PC lags. Second, it also makes it super hard for IG to actually go into the area and defend their building, despite Acid Spray, despite Cross Armor. So. Team Liquid now working on the Aegis. This one will come with Aegis and Cheese. Now IG and IG wanna fight it so Mazu taking it down fast. The Roche about to fall. Indeed it will. Blasting success up to the high ground. He's forced to retreat. IG are going to fight into this Aegis. And I think this time, Lumi, it'll come when Liquid are at their door, not just Ursa running in solo looking for kills as it's about to expire. There's about two minutes left for IG because I think Team Liquid will definitely wait for daytime. So do what you can, OP. Split push as hard as possible and uh, get whatever item that you, you deem necessary. Look, look like he's working towards a Sheba's guard. He's likely going to be able to finish it before the push comes, but it depends if he wants to retain buyback. Big that Sheba's game, especially when you start stacking that attack speed slow and, yes, yes. Uh, and the move speed with the ice armor. Liquid basically to finish kills, they're relying on three melee heroes right clicking. Granted, Monkey King has pretty long range, but nonetheless, it will be a potential counter. Bringing through the trees with a double damage rune and a freshly completed desolator. Miracle could be a huge damage during this fight. He does drop down into a camp while the flank takes four. Matumba Man coming in first, the TP onto the wolves, and now blinking into position. Miracle trying to break down too early, locked up the chain run. It's a bouncing beautifully. 
Lance damage from the Lich, and now Miracle standing his ground, fighting out that Lycan. The Wukong's command will end. The pain might begin now. Matsu on the run, very low, but has the Aegis. Second life also for mind control with the cheese. Can they win round two? It doesn't seem like it. The follow-up now begins, but the kiting XXX still alive, burrowing onto the Ursa. Bear being dealt with for now. OP low, not dead just yet. G8 salvaging, they get three. Liquid prevail, but they had to spend a lot there, Lumi. They blew the Aegis, they blew the Cheese, they did it outside the base. So they won't be able to threaten high ground with their full complement. At the same time, there's no outside back the center coming in from the back line. Line for him, and now the Epi on Debatu from the rear, they get the Ursa. That might force my control back. The wheels might have just come off of this push. My control slow to retreat, but the caustic is gonna make this a bit I, trickier. I don't think they can win that fight. They're gonna try. It's gonna be close here as mind control. Purge, hit him from the front. Oh. But Oka with the tricks, looking for the clean trade. And it's now still thinking a in. back. I don't know if you want to go in. There's something oh, they do. Finally, IG. it's a burn. spiky mouthful. Oh, I don't know about this, man. Still the commitment. <laughs> still the commitment. Oh, here comes Monkey King. Get out, get out. You're not gonna get the kill. Ice Block comes in. Bubble can get strike. Jam hits the deck. And now Monkey King jumps forward. IG getting sloppy, getting desperate. Liquid able to take advantage. Can they get more? They group up top. They want to end this game. It's daytime. Best it's in daytime. Here comes Team Liquid. What are you going to do against this? No HS, no Chiefs, whatever. They're going to pull back everybody with Global Recall, and they're going to just hit buildings. Liquid laying into the Tier 1 tower. Ice Armor slowing them down as best it can. But the siege is on now. Glyph gets forced out. The whole gang is back. They try to kite the bristle, slow him down. But Liquid are determined. The sun also rises as this melee rack drops lower and lower. Liquid will take it. One lane now opened up. Range to fall as well. And the big thing that during this push, Miracle has that Desolator. So the Minus Armor really ticking into and then basically counteracting what the Frost Armor could do in these team fights. Instead of going mid, they will go to the bottom. The bottom tower is much lower and the shrines are more spread apart. Making this defense here for IG much, much harder to come by. Upper right bracket now. lives on the line. Liquid are doing it. Working on the melee racks. IG must respond and they Wrap must around. do it soon. They look for the flag. XXS revving up the Epi. But what's him. he gonna hit? A him. swing, a miss. He gets nothing. Now Liquid chasing forward. IG racing in. They want to kill that keeper. But GH elusive. They finally get onto him. Isolating him in the goes for the TP out, where's the stuns? There are none! Away he goes, but still this does leave Matumbo Man stranded. The Ursa in a bit too far is gonna fall. Now the Bristlebacks being overwhelmed, slowing him down with the Shivas. Miracle has to watch him as he slowly gets chipped away at. He's in the trees, hiding for what he can. Still GH back into the fray, keeping his team alive. Overextending perhaps, but Boca could be punished. A staggered retreat, but IG aren't ready to give up the chase just yet. We they keep on pushing forward. They want more. Buy back again. Ursa looking for the punish. He gets the kill. The Riki down. And Lumi, that's a dieback. No smoke cloud for this fight. Liquid are very close. That melee wrecks a bit over half HP. Can they hold the line? Like in Shapeshift, down for 25 seconds. I think without the Shapeshift and the Ricky, they have no way to stick on GH. GH is the most important here right now. In fact, it's gonna be Ricky jumping in. They want the banking high class coming in, and they bounce it back in! GH with the LU play! Team Liquid going on the Raxus, and you're right, LD. They are doing it. Another set of Raxus. Miracle, man fighting up against OP. Commitment from my control. It's all about that melee. Slowly, but surely, the mace does its work. One more swing, down it goes. Two lanes for Liquid. They are hanging on, keeping the upper bracket dream alive. Now back to the Sand King. They need the third lane. IG are scrappy, they won't give up easy. But Liquid have the creep advantage now. Two lanes shoving in. It's a three-pronged assault. They keep the push going. Now the tower falls, one last land remains. That's all that stands between Liquid and a game three. Effigy's fighting the dust. And now the fight breaking out. But Tumba Man control when he gets off the enrage. He takes through it all. The Chain Frost bouncing. Beautiful stuff from the carry Lich's Q. 
keeps his team in the game. Go for he the is chase. They're gonna bring him down. IG not out of this yet. Pounding into the Ursa. He tries to fight it out, but the ice armor's there. The evasion is as well, and he can't get the kill. Three fall for Liquid. Close. Not done but yet. Not over yet. Tank King teleports in, finds mind control. Yule sets up. Here comes the cavalry. All five still alive for IG. They isolate him. They bring him down. Wants to help. He's waiting in position. Can mind control possibly get out of here? The quills are stacking up. He's slow. Oh, he no gets way. hit from the front. He they will fall. All right. IG. Oh, Damage man. control. Damage what control. Oh, they are in now. Go back to base. Push out the waves. OP can't do that. He is an alchemist. Somebody's got to watch out for bottom. You see the key differences in these team fights is IG's ability to isolate QH. GH, sorry. You gotta kill GH and you make sure that he doesn't constantly give him mana, give him HP through his Illuminate. He also makes buyback super crucial. Ursa fought back during that middle of the team fight and he was able to get recalled in instantly. You kill GH, you have a chance. Yeah, they are definitely identifying him as public enemy number one, IG. Him down, Chasing man. him out, there's the glimmer, he's got the ghost up there as well, the Wukong's command drop, saving private GH. It's the call, but in goes OP, diving deeper for this, he turns back for Kuro, the rest of the team takes the keeper down, he's got the buyback, Kuro does not, and pouncing away, Miracle retreats to the confines of high ground. The base slowly being chipped from north and south as Liquid's creep are doing what the heroes can't right yeah, now. Don't worry about it, LD. They regen. Tier 4 towers regen. They're okay. They're gonna keep pushing. They are killing out the buffer buildings, though. That's true. IG still trying to force the issue here. Miracle looking to slow them down in XXS with the pursuit. No jukes from you, Miracle, they say. The stuns get locked in to play forward. IG not out of it yet. Kill after kill coming their way. Towers are falling. Liquid perhaps feeling a bit overconfident. And under your hats, folks. IG could just force a Rax out of this. Keeper is back in five seconds. Again, they how much can he kite? Whether they have IG the Ice Blast, Lumi. It's a lot okay. of push from IG. Mauling this tower down. Mind Control gets in, but the Frost Armor protects them. Tower falls. The stall. It's all about GH now, it feels. Well, Lycan and Wolfform just getting completely stunned up by GH. They want to go and double force that pushes him back. Good kiting. Liquid stalling nicely here, forcing burning low. He may have to retreat. That leaves OP on his own. He's got the BOTs. Manta out. TP away. And no bash, bash, bash. Oh. bash. <laughs> there is a basher available in that Ursa. Unfortunately, they're not done yet. They're still chasing mind control. It has the gem. And you're right, LB, they, they need to start pushing out the, the base. I, I did say, you know, care for do regen, but... It's it's <laughs> yeah. slow. Yeah, it's slow. They took some heavy yeah. damage as those waves kept on shoving But hey, in. that was a big turn of event for IG. You know, they got a couple of buildings, got a couple of extra kills, and more importantly, they got Team Liquid off their back for a little bit. But again, the third Roshan. I mentioned how important the second Roche was in terms of taking two lanes of racks. The third one, just as important. And I don't think Team Liquid will be challenged here. Although, as I say that, IG Dyer's smokes out. IG love challenging. They rotate around XXS with an arcane rune, so the low cooldown stun in play in this fight. Where's GH? Finds GH. Oh, almost, almost. There you go. Burrows in. Still clips of it. Now the connection is. Bu 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 surges forward. GH stays alive. The glimmer cape enough to keep him up, but he's shape up Bernie now and nipping at his heels. Go Scepter, doing what it can. Finally, they will slay the beast. He instantly buys back. They know how crucial this keeper is. They know they can't afford to give up this Roche. Liquid are committing for it, and now it's the Sand King they want. The Sand King they might get. Burrows away, looks for the save with the Lotus Orb coming through. Will it be enough? Oh They'd rather God. sack the Riki, but that is a gem down. In fact, I don't think there are any gems available for IG, whether it's on their heroes or in their shop. So they're going to be playing without vision for a while. The buyback here from Cheese, the Cures of Roshan, Aegis and Cheese into the coffers of Team Liquid. And we are still in the same situation where IG is down by two sets of racks. I... Somebody wants that cheese, surely. Okay. It's American. Fermenting does not work in Dota 2. That is, that is already moldy cheese. <laughs> Can't get any smell here. But it still heals when you need it. And Liquid, they've got plenty coming from GH. Now, Lumi, if he dies in this push, that could be a big problem. Because we've seen how important he is to their team fight. Liquid are smoking in. They're just looking to dive. An early assault on this melee rack. Perhaps finding kills to start it off. 
No Let's bash. see. The jump comes through, but the Sand King there with the kite. Bashing off the bash. Yoles. XXS, he burrows back to safety. Liquid have gone really deep for this kill. Ice Blast streaming into the fountain. Dodge on Ice Blast. Bang, he's gone. Sand King out for 100 seconds. That might be it. Liquid just got to push these lanes in, but look at the waves. They're being cut by the Alk. Illusions denying these creeps. Buying time, but creeps are coming top. Mind control. Thwack, thwack. Black continues to work. Miracle at his side. Obuka going in on the back line. He's going for the kill on Kuroki. Kuroki forced that back out. He shoved me back in. He wants Kuroki. Miracle comes in though. They get Obuka. Chain Frost will finish the job of 1-1 one, one trade. IG are down both supports now. That AA has buyback. OP now comes in one at a time into the meat grinder. Commitment here, but that bristle stays alive. Very tanky. They keep on nipping at his heels, but can they bring him down? OP driving him. Now Matu looking to bail out his buddy with the turnaround. Liquid once more under the breach and they G -G. have done it! Game three awaits. LD, you want a crazy statistic? Sure. IG was leading in gold the entire game. Just shows you that sometimes gold isn't everything. Just because you got the evil greed, just because you're farming well, the pressure from Team Liquid. That GH Aghanim Scepter was so, so key.